as Godfrieda mentioned, today is a special day and there are so many people we are grateful for. There are many, many countries in this world where you can't do what we're doing now. You can't gather, you can't read the Bible, you can't own a Bible. You certainly can't talk about Jesus. Well, I'm thankful for all the people who have made it possible for us to be that free that we can do that today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Well, it's Remembrance Sunday and we're going to talk about remembrance today. In uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 11, verse 24, it says, Jesus said, and when he'd given, or said about Jesus, when he'd given thanks, he broke the bread and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And we take communion every week because the Lord told us to take it every week. And we do it and we take the, the, the grape juice uh, which represents the, 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 the blood of Jesus Christ and we take the bread which represents his body and we do it in remembrance of him. We remember what he's done for us. We remember each time we take communion, he laid down his life for us so that we could be free. We wear poppies and go to remembrance services every year in remembrance of those who gave the ultimate sacrifice that we might be free today. I don't remember ever going to a remembrance service as a child, I may have done, but I joined the army at 15 and ever since then I've been going to remembrance service every single day every single remembrance day. Um, I do remember several times in the army uh, we'd be stood on a parade square having a remembrance service and it'd be a nice day like it is today. I've stood on a parade square on remembrance day and it's been absolutely throwing it down with rain but we did it anyway. What a small sacrifice for me to pay just to say thank you to all of those people. We take communion together and it's a small sacrifice for us to do, to actually physically do that, to take that time to do that, just to say thank you for all the things that Jesus has done. We're thankful to the fallen that we can live free. We're thankful to Jesus that we have eternal life. Amen. In 2 Timothy 1, 4, Paul says about Timothy, greatly desiring to see you being mindful of your tears, that I might be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded is in you also. Do you know, we need to remember there is genuine faith inside of us. The Bible says that we have been given a gift of faith by Jesus. We have received a gift from Jesus of faith. And it's genuine faith. Some people have sort of false faith and hope in things. We have a genuine faith in Jesus. And I believe it was just as genuine a faith in the people who went into these battles. Who stood against our enemies and believed it was right to do so. Their faith brought us the freedom and liberty we have so we can worship God. Our faith, your faith, can do the same for other people to be free. Especially when you stand against the devil who's coming against their lives. To let them know by prayer. To let them know you can pray for them and make a change, make a difference. Because you've got genuine faith. The faith that you have will work. When you apply the word of God and pray for someone, then it will change their lives and bless them in Jesus' name. Just like the people back in the day who gave their life, they, re they recognized that they didn't want, a lot of them wanted to lay their lives down. What they wanted to do was defeat the enemy. And they defeated the enemy. And now we're free. 
in the next verses it says in 2 Timothy 1, 6 Wherefore I need, I put you into remembrance that you stir up the gift of God which is in you by the putting on of my hand. For God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We are reminded to remember to stir up the gift that God's given us. Stir it up. How do you stir up the gift? Well, first of all, you've got to read your Bible to know what these gifts are. You've got to read your Bible to know which things have been given to you, which things are yours already. Do you know there is nothing that God wants us to have that he hasn't given us already? You say, well, I haven't got peace. He's given it to you. You say, well, I haven't got all the financial blessings. He's given it to you. Say, so, well, I haven't got full physical health. He's given it to you. you just got to receive it. But if you don't know what it is you've already got, you can't hold on to it, and you can't operate in that gift. But he wants to stir us, just to stir up the gift that's in us. God has given me a gift of being able to, to read the Bible by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and speak it out to people so that it will change their lives. I've been reasonably effective doing that over the years. And it's, cause it's a gift that God's given me and I absolutely love doing it. I stir it up. I encourage myself because I know I can do this through him. Amen. You have got gifts in you that you know you can do through him. And many of you have got so many gifts you have not used any of them. God told me this morning. Several of you have got these gifts you're just not using them. But we have to remember too, it says here, remember. When he says remember, it wasn't just about stirring up the gift, it was the other thing. Remember, there's no fear here. God has not given us a spirit of fear. There's no fear here. Just power and love. Power to do it and love to gather us together and love the people. And you've got a sound mind. You have a sound mind. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. That means we can actually, this is real, this is true from the Bible, you can actually think like Jesus thinks. When there is an issue going on, you think, I wonder, I wonder what I should think about that. Think what Jesus would think. You know, there was some time ago, some people still wear them, little bangles, WWJD, what would Jesus do? I honestly think it should have been WWJS. What would Jesus say? remember Kenneth Copeland once he was preaching he was saying I was, this person came to me and they were so excited that they'd seen this vision of Jesus and one person stood by, beside this person and said oh it's wonderful I'm so blessed for you what was he wearing and Kenneth Copeland said never mind what was he wearing what did he say Amen. Jesus is Jesus is not hope couture Jesus is the word and if you want to know about Jesus, you've got to know what he's going to say about any given situation. Read the Bible, it's in there. But once you put that word inside of you, it's now yours. And you can stir it up, you can stir that word up and make it real <clears throat> into your life. So because we've got a sound mind and we've got the mind of Christ, we don't have to think like the world does. When we see a negative situation going on, we don't go, oh no, how terrible, how awful is that? We don't think like that. We're overcomers. In fact, the Bible says, you're more than that. You are more than a conqueror through Christ who loves you. More than a conqueror. Remember that, Paul is saying to Timothy here. Remember these things. Don't let them slip away from you. In 2 Peter 2, <clears throat> so 2 Peter 1 verse 12, he says, Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. I do not have a problem remembering what's been done for me. Some people have a problem with that. They completely forget the things that people have done for them. I've seen so many ungrateful people where people do so many things for them, there's not an ounce of gratitude in them. 
I have no problem remembering and being grateful for the things that have been done for me, especially by Jesus. But by Jesus, and also those people who I don't even know about, who have died in the past, so I can be free today to preach this word. And I will not be negligent in reminding other people, even if you already know it, the scripture says, especially when I'm reminding people of what Jesus did for them. I will not be negligent in that. I will do it, because that's what the Bible says we should do. And you know, he's not just talking to me. He's talking to you as well. Don't be negligent in telling people what Jesus has done for them. Let them know what Jesus has done. It says then, when you know these things, you'll be established in the present truth. The Bible says uh, in the Old Testament, it says, if you believe the Lord, you will be established. Believe in his word, believe in what he said, you will be established. And he says the present truth, what is the present truth? The present truth is that bit from the Bible which applies to you right now. You might be fully healthy, there might be nothing wrong with your body whatsoever, the scriptures that says by his stripes you were healed, they're there but you don't need it today. You might need some financial blessing. That's the scripture that's for you today. The present truth, the one you need in your life right now. That's the one Jesus is talking about. But also the fact that when Jesus spoke all these words, he may have spoken them a couple of thousand years ago, but they're still the present truth today. Amen. And in a hundred or a thousand years time, they're still going to be the present truth. Because they're still valid, they're still accurate, and they're still true. Everything about God's word is true. Amen? It's not just about what Jesus did. It's what he's still doing. He's about to do many more things in our life. We've heard that already today. And he's going to do it in a wonderful way. Not only is it going to bless him, it's going to bless you. Do you want some more stuff going on in your life? Then Jesus is going to do it for you and he's going to do it now. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Later on in, in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 said, Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle, in both of which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the Apostles of the Lord and Saviour. I don't just want you to stir your minds up, I want you to stir your minds about something. I want you to stir your minds about what has been said about you. Stir your minds up about what the Bible says about you, what the Old Testament says about you, what the Apostles and Prophets have said about you, and what especially what Jesus has said about you. The thing about Jesus is, it's not just what he said, it's what he said about you. And you need to know who you are in Christ Jesus. That means, you say you are what he says you are. You don't say you are what the circumstances say, or what your bank manager says, or what the debt collector says. You say what Jesus said. You don't even say what the doctor said. You say what Jesus said. Because his word is yours. It's a present truth and it's still yours. Stir your minds up. Stir your minds up to think like Jesus. Remind yourself of these words. Read the Bible often and remind yourself. That's why we here constantly refer to the Bible. You won't ever see me standing up and preaching without quoting the Bible. I've got nothing to say. I've got nothing to say at all. I want you to hear what the Bible has to say. I can elaborate on it and explain it slightly but I'm still going to be talking about the Bible because that's the only important book the only important book in the universe Amen. you know it's still the best seller around the world despite people trying to stop it being written, printed and even read people are st trying to stop that from happening it never will it never will Amen. thank you Jesus so to remind ourselves about what's been spoken about us in the Bible we also remember the lessons of history. 
so we can be watchful to ensure that those evil things never happen again. That's why there are memorials, that's why there are war memorials. There's one little one here in Warminster, there's a bigger one uh, in London and there's memorials and things like that around the world to remember the sacrifices that people have made but also so that there's a place where we can remember what the evil people did that's why those people had to die and we want to make sure that never happens again we also need to watch the, in the history of the courage of the people who give those who gave their lives so we can have freedom to own and read a Bible we don't, we just, in this country we have no idea just how free that is. I heard not very long ago about somebody who was imprisoned in China for owning a Bible. Never mind reading it and believing it and preaching it, just owning one is illegal. In lots of these Arab countries you own a Bible, you talk about Jesus, you will go to jail if they don't kill you because they don't believe in Jesus. So we need to be so grateful for all that has been done, not just Jesus, all these other people, so we are free to read the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. In Psalm 122, verse 5 said, A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. When we do the things that are right, we will operate in discretion and we will never be shaken. Never be shaken. If you're doing the right thing, you, can be shaken. you won't be shaken. I remember hearing somebody preaching one day, he said, somebody said to him, what would happen if you found out one day you'd been doing all this living for God and you, suddenly you found out there was no God? He said, I'd carry on the way I'm doing it now, he said, because it works. When I apply the words of God, it works in my life. When I believe the words of God and I apply them to my life, my life is changed. And I am so grateful for that. It also says, when we live a righteous life by the power of Jesus, we will be in everlasting remembrance. Let us think in a minute. When you live a righteous life, you whatever your name is, the different people here, the people listening and watching on the video, you personally will be in everlasting remembrance. Every righteous thing we ever do has eternal consequences. The things that we do change people's lives. You will forever be remembered for how you live for Jesus. Forever. People will talk about it. We, we, we can talk about people we know now or people we've known from the past who've lived for Jesus and we talk about them because they live for Jesus and for the righteous things that we do for other people the thing where we bless people where we do things where we we share a word with somebody that encourages somebody where we lift somebody up who needs a lift where we give even just give somebody a hug who needs one that's you know it's so amazing it changes people's lives and those righteous things will be remembered especially when we lay down our lives now we're not you don't have to die to lay your life down every one of us in this room today has laid down our life because you could have been at home in bed you could have done something else you could have been with your family which isn't wrong you could have gone shopping I'm not so sure about that on a Sunday morning when there's church you know uh, there's lots of things you could have been doing but you chose to obey God and God says come to church and be blessed with other people when you know someone needs some help and you go and visit them you've laid down your life when you give some money to somebody to help them you've laid down your life God wants us to do that that will put you in a place where you're doing righteous things and the righteous will be held in everlasting remembrance I like that I want to be held in everlasting remembrance because I want to have done something that has eternal consequences. In Philippians chapter 1 verse 3 it says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Always, in every prayer of mine, making requests for you 
for you all with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from this day until now, from the first day until now. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Today we are thanking God as we remember the fallen, their sacrifice has made the world a better place. I want people to be thanking God when they remember me, that somehow I made their world a better place. But more importantly to me, I want people to be thanking God when they remember you. I want people to be thanking God when they remember each one of you. When they remember you, they will be praying joyfully. They'll be thinking about you with joy because of the things, the righteous things you've done. They'll be thanking God as Paul is here just for being able to fellowship with you. We consider it an absolute privilege at any time whatsoever to be having fellowship with another believer. It is absolutely an honour that God makes that possible for us to fellowship with the Jesus inside someone else. That is such a blessing. That's why we love doing it. And if, if you personally are in a place where you don't, or you're not able for whatever reason to fellowship with other people that often, change it. Do something about that so that you can spend more time more often with other people. Fellowship with the Jesus inside them and let them fellowship with the Jesus inside you. When people think of you, I want them to remember that the work that God began in you, he will bring to completion. Now, whenever we look at another Christian, we might look at some people and think, they don't seem to be doing very much for God. He hasn't finished with them yet. They always seem to be in trouble, always having problems. He hasn't finished with them yet. They always seem to be sick. He hasn't finished with them yet. He hasn't finished with you yet, which is why you're still whinging and moaning about things and haven't allowed him to change that bit of you. He wants to change everything. He's going to change everything. But you know, you see, Jesus isn't going to change things, actually. What he's going to do is get us to line up with what he's already done. We don't have to change. We're already changed by him. Remember I said this a while ago, some of you may not have heard me say it. All of the other sects and religions and cults always have an aim. You have to, you have to achieve nirvana. You have, to, you have to achieve this peace. You have to get to a place where you've got something. It's not that with Jesus. With Jesus, you spend all your life not searching for something. You spend all your life trying to work out what it is that he did do for you in one go. He's done it all. Now it's going to take us forever to work out what all those wonderful things are. Because every time you see something in the Bible, I can tell you for sure you've missed something. Every time we see anything that's good in the Bible, there's something else in there we haven't seen yet. Because he's going to keep on bringing good things to us. You know, I used to love uh, seeing the Giles cartoons. you remember the Giles cartoons that were in the newspaper? And you could look back at old, in fact you could get uh, little booklets of them. You could look back at a Giles cartoon and see something you'd never spotted before. Every time he used to make them in such a way that you would see the overall picture. But when you look closely there was other stuff going on as well. It's similar to the Bible. Every time you read the Bible you can pick any scripture you like and someone could preach on it for a hundred years. The same scripture taking different things out of it because there's so much in there that's why God wants us to remember he wants us to stir up our minds he wants us to remind ourselves of yes of what the other people have done for us that we can be free but what he did for us and has already placed in the Bible has made real in our lives already and we haven't received it all yet don't quit doing things with God don't quit doing things for God he hasn't finished with you yet, and he never will. 
at the end of the service, or part of the service they do with, at the centre-half, or did this morning at the centre-half, and we're going to do in Warminster this afternoon at the War Memorial, when they read out the phrase, we will remember them, everybody else replies, we will remember them. Well, I can tell you from the Bible, we will remember you. We will remember you. We'll remember the fellowship we've had with you. We'll remember the things about you that cause us to pray. And we pray with joy. We'll remember the things about you and know that God hasn't finished with you yet. There are more things he has yet to do in your life. We will remember you with gratitude. We will remember you and say, I thank God that I was able to fellowship with that person. I thank God I was able to have that person in my life. To be able to come alongside them and help them and let them come alongside me and help me. You know, there's nothing greater to me than spending time with Jesus. And because I can't spend time with him physically, I have to spend time with him with another person. You know, we've been together with other Christians before now and we, we just meet one another, give one another a hug and it's like we were, it's like 30 seconds since the last time we met. You know, because we're still believers, we're still brothers and sisters in Christ. We still love being with one another. That's why we're encouraged when we have things like this, this, this banquet that we're having next month. Because it's time for us to fellowship in a, in a more relaxed atmosphere over some food. I love, I like food. You know, I'm not supposed to eat as much as I do, I'm sure, but I do like food. And I love doing things where food's concerned and being fellowshipping with the other people. If it was just me sat on my own eating food, it wouldn't be so good. Not at all. But if I can eat it with someone else and fellowship with somebody else at the time. You know, Jesus spoke a lot about food. He spoke quite a lot about food. And even at the, the time when he was in, they were having the Last Supper in the upper room, he took the bread with them. And it says that when it came to the cup after supper, he didn't drink that. Because he'd already said, I'm not going to drink of the wine until it's new in my father's kingdom. I'm not there yet, he's got to come back for that. But he was there, fellowshipping with them, eating and drinking with them. And I know, I, lo I love to do that. And I love to be with you, and I love to be with other believers that I know, because it's just such a joy to be able to spend time with the Jesus in you. And I know that you, you might find there's something about me you might not like. Well, Jesus hasn't finished with me yet. You know? Uh, and I know that there are things about every one of us that, that might uh, sort of niggle other people. Just remember, Jesus hasn't finished with them yet. There is much more work he needs to do. But I can tell you for sure, because of the fact that you love Jesus and you know uh, quite a lot about him, there's a lot more you can do. When you allow those things you know to change your life, when you stir up your mind to remember the good things he's done for you, we will remember you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.